I want to go back to the the orphan wisdom kind of concept because I think there's something for me to learn there, and maybe I'll give you a little bit of my background so we can ident- identify that. So my family's from India. I was born in the states. You know, grew up on the West Coast, California, Washington State, and had a very traditional material education. You know, math, computer science, philosophy, and so the notion that there is some wisdom in my ancestors that's begging to be expressed through me that is different than the wisdom I could learn from another cultural tradition is a bit of a foreign notion. And I I say that as someone who went back to India as an adult and spent five years learning all of these traditions there, meditation, yoga, classical music, Ayurveda, cooking, and it totally transformed me. So even though I've had that experience, it's still intellectually, I want to say, well, Stephen, I could have gone to China and spent five years in China and learned all the meditative traditions of China and it'd be the same. But I think you're saying, no, it would not have been the same. Well, we could at least, at the very least, acknowledge to each other that it may, this is all hypothesis now, it may end up being the same for you. You didn't finish the sentence. But when I'm talking about ancestry, I'm talking about those guys too. And it may not be the same outcome for them if you went to China. Surely to God, this is what prayer is. I'm just going to plead and make a case at the same time. Most praying, as I've heard it described and invoked and and referred to, it's rare to begin with, but when it materializes, It's basically a variation on the theme of gimme, gimme, I ain't got. I'm so unworthy or what, you know, that whatever the case that you think you're making by referring to your worthiness as a linchpin in this whole thing. I think that what, when prayer is not petitioned for, for amplitude, it includes acknowledgement of the consequences of formally making this prayer for the receiving end of it. Now that's as rare as hen's teeth, as we say around here. So I've never heard it, to be honest. But when you grow up as a staunch, involuntary monotheist, as most people who look like me on this continent have done, then you come with you you involuntarily come to the notion that that. Oh, if you're talking about the divine, if you're talking about the holy, if you're talking about the deities, if you're talking about God or gods, singular or plural, here's the job description of gods. They got enough. Don't you worry about them. And you know, without thinking that for a second, that whole assumption of amplitude transports itself across the, I don't know what no man's land it might be, and affixes itself to your understanding of your ancestry as well. So you can't possibly impoverish your ancestors by anything you do or fail to do in your life. Because they're dead. That's the, that's the idea. It's like, I'm alive, they're dead, I can't affect them. That's, that's the belief you're talking about. Yes? Well, even, no, no, it's not. It, even if you acknowledge that what you do could affect them, it could never diminish them. You see, because in their deadness, they are fulfilled. You see, this is the the working assumption. I mean, there's no there's no real scholarship that supports such such a thing. But the degree to which people look at me, like me think about ancestry at all, they think of it. I believe as a kind of Walmart. I've never been in a Walmart, but this is what they tell me: it's just endless possibilities, just shelf after shelf of shit you don't need. Right, And so this is how people seem to come to their ancestry. Only in times of trouble, never as a formal thing, always as a somewhat involuntary thing, in extremis, you know, when everything else fails, including you, suddenly they're a good idea. I mean, it's not an accident. It seems to me that you're dead, must eyeball God from time to time and go, man, this is a rough gig, isn't it? And God says, amen, this is a rough gig. The only time they ever come to us is when the shit hits the fan for them. And no acknowledgement over here 
none whatsoever. So I think prayer, you know, properly, legitimately practiced is most of it is an acknowledgement of the consequence of all the neglect since the last time you prayed. So we're new to YouTube and we would love your feedback. Please comment, subscribe, follow, tell all your friends and let us know what you think.